Blessings to you, Bishop. How are you? I am well, sir. I am thanking God for all his goodness and mercy. Amen. We have so much to thank God for. Amen. So, so much. Yes, we have so much to thank God for. This is a race, not for the swift, but nor a battle for the strong, but he that endure it until the endure. end. Amen. We have a pretty interesting lesson coming up in the Achille. name of yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead. You're gonna yeah, say absolutely, yeah, absolutely. This is um this is where the rubber uh, meets the road, you know. This is what um this is what the Bible has what the prophets have spoken about, you know, um what Jesus himself has been warning about. Um it's just where the rubber meets the road. Um Amen. you know the combination of the scriptures over the over the past two thousand years so I've been speaking about. Uh, you know, Noah preached it, uh, the Apostle Paul wrote it, um, the prophets warned about it. Here it is. Here it is being spoken of in the in the book of Revelation. And so, you know, even as ministers of God who are who are teaching this, we we, we also get this feeling, this eerie feeling. You know, we don't have the spirit of fear, but when we look at it, we recognize how how a wonderful God we have, but oh, a terrible God He can be. It's a fearful yes. thing to fall into the hands of the living God. All right, why don't we bow our heads in a word of prayer, and then we can start exactly on time and take the time to do this. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this, our Sunday school, as we gather together, oh God. We look to you. Lord, you are the author. You are the finisher of our faith. And as we study your word and see the truth of your word, we are trusting in you. We are hoping in you. We are depending on you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your graciousness, oh God. Open our minds. Open our understanding. Open our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We want to say a pleasant good morning to you, you and you. Good morning to Minister Brown. Amen. We want to say a pleasant good morning to you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning to all those who are in service today. Amen. Attending Sunday school, wherever you might be. Because the Bible says, if any man being Christ, he's a new creature. So whether you're here or there, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give thanks for you. Our lesson. Amen. Our Sunday school lesson today, it comes from Revelation, the 16th chapter. And last week, last week, we begun, amen, and we were looking into the book of Revelation. Today is Sunday, October the 18th, 2020. And our topic today, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. We said our focus is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. <coughs> Here Peter wrote profound words. Peter says we got to gird up the loins of our minds because perilous times going to come. Difficult yes. times when men's heart failing them because of fear. And he said we should hope to the end for the grace. We have to hope for grace. The grace yes. of God to the end that is to be brought unto us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So times will get difficult. Yes. Times will get hard. And men's heart will fail them for fear. When they see fear. the various things happening around us and everything, men will become fearful. So he says we must hope to the end for grace. A key verse comes from Revelation chapter 16, verse 15, and it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So it is important that we remain watchful. 
We can't fall asleep right now. We have to have our hearts fixed, our minds made up, and our eyes open looking for the coming of the Lord. So in last week, we spoke to you from Revelation chapter 16. And just a quick recap. The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun. And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. And the kingdom, the kingdom of the beast, was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain. Today, we will continue Beginning with verse 12, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Bishop Stevens. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Elder, for that introduction. Amen. Amen. And as Elder just said to you, we are now looking at the seven final plagues the seven final plagues and i would uh, and i would say that these are the most the most gruesome of all the plagues that we've seen we've seen other plagues poured out but now we are in the seven final plagues in particular this one in, in verse 12 where by the bible said and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river euphrates and the water thereof was dried up and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared what we see here again we talk about the great river euphrates the great river euphrates such a significant river uh, that is found in in the east and that river is is one that many depend upon for agriculture for water supply uh it is used sometimes as a political pawn against each other yet fighting for you know this particular water and this particular part of the region. Uh, but this is weird about that the angels put out this vial. The angels put out the vial of the great river Euphrates. But the, the water was not yet separated. The water was not yet painted. But the Bible said that the water was dried up. Yeah. It's a whole river. A whole river was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. What do we see here? We see here now where the water now has been removed. There's no more water to separate each other. In other words, we have countries that are divided by water. That in itself has subdued a lot of wars. Men would have been warring with each other constantly mm -hmm. had it not been the separation of waters. The seas, the Mediterranean, the you know the Atlantic Ocean, all of these seas have separated countries from each other that one can live peaceably, you know, with each other. So sometimes it's best to call to a neighbor across the way, as opposed to stand in their face and talk to them, because sometimes you know people have not yet learned how to speak to each other, you know, gracefully and respectfully. So sometimes we need to we need we need somebody in the in the middle to speak for each other. The water separates countries because we would have been at war with each other constantly. But here the Bible says the water was dried up to make way for the king of the east, preparing for something, something to come. Amen? Amen. Now verse 13 says, And I saw three, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. Thank God. Very significant here. Very significant here. Several things we see here going on. The Bible states, the dragon, the beast, the false prophet. But I want to look at the frogs too. These are these are plays we saw that came up in Egypt. And Pharaoh could not stand to see these frogs anymore in the city. He called Moses and said, Come take these people out of my sight. Take them away from here and take away this plague. 
The frog spirits. They're slimy, they're gruesome, they're ugly looking to even look upon. Just to touch them is even worse. But these three unclean spirits, like frog, the Bible said, came out of the mouth of the dragon, the devil, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. These are words, these are curses. These are those who speak speak anger and, and, and lies and misleading God's people. It comes out of them. Out of their mouth they speak vile, wickedness, evil, speaking unto you on the earth. And they come to you speaking this wickedness, wars constantly. Folks ought to understand, the king of the earth speaks like this. They talk about wars constantly, putting one side against each other. We have parties, you know, we have parties in, in, in countries. We have two major parties in this country. In other countries, they have, they have two or three major parties. These are the kings of the earth, you know, separating God's people by speaking vile and wickedness to separate man from each other. The beast, the false prophet, they were given power by the dragon. The Bible speaks in Ephesians 2 and verse 2, speaks about the prince of the power of the air, the prince of the power of the ear. That same spirit that now speaketh in the children of disobedience. It is that same spirit, devil rulers who have control over the minds of many people. But the Bible says in 14, it spoke, speaks about the spirit of the devils. These are devils. Let me read it. But they are the spirit of devils working miracles. Spirits of devil working miracles. The Bible said that the devil transforms himself into an, into an angel of light. Much more its own ministers. Yes. So we have to be very careful. Oh, we go to yeah. churches and we see people worshiping. We see them, them doing all manner of things. But Jesus Christ said that we know not what we worship or we pray for. So we have to be very careful. The Bible said they are spirits of devils working miracles. <laughs> Let's, be careful. Let's be very careful. Which go forth unto the kings of the earth. These are leaders now. Going forth unto the leaders of the earth of the whole world. So the whole world is infected by these devils working miracles. To gather them together. <laughs> yeah, God. So they're gathering them together to go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day, gathering them to fight with their arms yeah, raised. Right. Preparing them. We spoke about how the river was dried up. You know, these are preparations. Now they have been prepared to, to, to fight. We spoke about the battle, the battle of Armageddon. We're going to get there. But they're not being prepared to fight. It's what it is. The battle of the great day of God Almighty. All Amen. things are of God. All, all things. things. All things. Even wars are of God. My God, Amen. my God. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. My God. This is powerful. It's extremely powerful. So what the angel put yes. fire into the air. There came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. What do we see here? The seventh angel poured out its vial. Let's go to Revelation 21 and look at verse 6. Revelation 21 and verse 6. So we know exactly what we're looking at here. Revelation oh, chapter... Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Revelation chapter 21, verse 6. And he said unto me, it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Okay. 
Wonderful. Now, sir, go to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. And reading from verse 8. Revelation chapter 1, verse 8. Verse 8. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. A, a very great person taught me something. Listen, uh, taught me something last night, and, and I pondered on it, and I thank God for, for revelation. This we see here is the voice of Jesus himself. The voice of God himself speaking. When he said, when he said, when it, the voice said, it is done. It is done. Amen. Uh, there were voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not seen since man was upon the earth. So mighty and an earthquake and so great. The seventh angel back in seven, verse seven, uh, chapter 17, in verse 17, I'm sorry. The seventh angel poured out his vial into the earth air, and there came a great voice, a great voice of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. It is done. It is done. Mm. The seven plagues have now been completed. Hallelujah. But what follows that is yes. what's interesting. Mm -hmm. The Bible in, 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 in verse 18 says, And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. So we see here where there are things happening that was never done before, never happened before. Profound. This is after we see the seventh angel poured out its vine upon the earth. These things come upon the earth. And in that, if all that is happening, there must be death and destruction. <coughs> there must be some form of death and destruction. Because earth, thunders, lightnings, earthquakes, we know in earthquake, for the most part in earthquake, lives will be lost. Yes. We see where lightnings take place and people are hurt. People are struck down. But the Bible speaks about what? Lightnings of a, of a greater nature here. Yes. Thunder of a greater nature here. These we have never seen before. So I, when I hear this, when I hear a thunder strikes, it is scary. It is utterly scary. Because that thing sounds like the, the, the sky is about to open up. Mm. It's as if heaven meeting earth. That that roar, that sound, that terror, it's it speaks of fear into the mind of those who are not conscious that there is a God up in heaven that controls all this. So he says, and there were voices and thunders. And, there were voices. and thunders yes. and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were up on the earth. Never before like this. Never before. Never before. You know, Noah, Noah preached and, and the waters came. The waters came suddenly. The rains came. But by the year saying that even though men were destroyed in those days, we saw the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. We saw the destruction after Noah preached. We saw many destruction, but here the Bible is saying that would never, this was never done before. So this is, this is very significant and very powerful. We ought to be careful. This is not something that you want to be a victim of then. Amen? So Amen. it's very important for us when we read the scriptures to look and see what the scripture is saying. When the Bible said that uh, such, such, since men were upon the earth, such as was not since men were upon the face of the earth. It has never happened before, but it's happening now. Amen. 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 Now, in verses 19 and 20, we see something different occurring. It says, and the great city was divided into three parts. Praise God. The great city, Jerusalem. 
divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. One thing we must remember as we read in verse 17, where it says, And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. Yeah. Now a lot of people fail to realize that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Amen. He is a spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So the Amen. wrath of God was being poured out even into the air. It was poured out even upon that prince who had power in the, <coughs> in the air. The things that go out over the air, the airwaves, pornography, movies, sports, news, lying, cheating, telephone calls. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He is the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Our cell phones transmit uh -huh. through the air. And whatever comes or whatever goes, goes through the air. So God passes judgment upon the air. The seventh angel poured out the vial of his wrath into the air. Um, many have said that this coronavirus disease is airborne. Could it be a symptom? Could it be something that came out of the wrath of God being poured out in the air? We see governments in turmoil. We see nations in turmoil. Why do we see that? <clears throat> well, the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and a great voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, it is done. What is done? The wrath of God. But if you remember when we read in our introduction, where we set our focus is upon 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. It says, Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. So even during the time of the revelation of Jesus Christ, we ought to hope for grace. Yes. We must never there abide at three things. <coughs> Faith, hope, and charity. Charity, the love of God, or the grace of God, because all God's ways are judgment. When God said, let there be light, that was judgment. Judgment upon darkness. When God said, let the dry lands appear, that was judgment upon the waters that were without form and the earth that was void. <coughs> All God's ways are judgment. That's why the Bible teaches us in the principles of the doctrine of eternal judgment. The Bible teaches us that the principles of the doctrine, Bishop, you want to say something? No, no, go ahead, go ahead, sir. The principles of the doctrine, repentance, Faith, baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. So the wrath of God being poured out, just like the seals, just like the trumpets, and now the bowls are the judgments of God. Bishop Stevens. So now I have a question, uh, 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 Reverend. Now that you've come to that point, um, and you spoke about, uh, you know, Satan... You know uh, who has power in the prince of the air uh you know things you speak into the air uh, you know um i want to elaborate so others can hear this oftentimes uh we pray we pray aloud oftentimes we would speak things and sometimes you know people would say be careful what you speak in the air because when you speak it into the into the air you speak it you speak it into into existence you know, some people say, well, you know, I like to pray in tongues because the devil does not understand what you're saying. So let me, let me pray in tongues as opposed to let me pray out loud. 
where the enemy can understand what you're saying. Collaborate some more on when you speak into the air, what can happen and what we're talking about here. Well, the Bible makes us to know that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And when Daniel had prayed to the Lord and had asked the Lord questions, the Lord sent the answers back to him. As the angel was returning with the answer, the devil withstood him. And Michael had to come, the archangel, and help him in this war. So what happens is even your prayers and the answers, if he will interfere with the answer from God, then he must have heard the prayer. <laughs> he will interfere with your prayer to God. So we have to be wise in how we pray. The Bible says with moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered. That yes. cannot be, with what? Mm. Mm. Oh God. Mm. Oh Lord. Now, a lot of times people don't understand that in the spirit, when you even pray in tongues, you speak it unto God. Yes. Speaking, you speak unto God. But Daniel spoke to God. And the adversary interfered with the answer coming back. So yes. speaking in tongues, they're going to say, oh, Satan, if you speak in tongues, Satan lifted up Jesus and put him <laughs> on the pinnacle of the temple. <laughs> And, and tell him to jump. So you're speaking in tongues. They're just saying that, but you ask them, show me a scripture to validate what you're saying. It is not there. What the validation Amen. is, he says, with moanings and groanings that yes. cannot be uttered. Mm. Moanings and groanings. He don't know what you say. No, you know what the Bible says? It is a spirit, the spirit of God, that make an intercession for you. For you know not what you ought to pray for. So you're this. Amen. I'm going to pray and say, Lord, oh, oh I'm, and I'm going to moan and groan. Lord, so you don't even know what you should pray for. Yeah, but yes, right. when your spirit pray it, the Holy yeah. Spirit now make an intercession for you. Tongues are, assi are assigned to the unbeliever. And tongues go out in the air in three forms. New tongues, that is people used to curse and speak all kind of things. They stop and now have a different speech. That is new tongues. Other tongues, the languages of the earth. French, Spanish, German, Russian, English. And unknown tongues. Tongues that are not known among mankind. But it didn't tell us that it's unknown to angels it says unknown tongues and in the reference it seems unknown to mankind but is it known in the spirit world that's something we would have to look into but he says right. with, when you pray with moanings and groanings that cannot be uttered it is a spirit now the spirit of God we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, making intercession for us. So within himself, he is praying for us. Because we know not what we ought to pray for. Amen. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So whatever goes out into the air, that is his domain. And he works in the children of disobedience. So we have to understand we must hope unto the end for grace. Yes. Before grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, Noah found it at the judgment of the flood. At the judgment of the flood, the Bible says, Now Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. At the judgment of the bowls, we too can find grace in God's eyes. Um, John said, and I saw a sea as of glass mingled with fire. And those that had overcome the beast and his name and his image stood upon the sea of glass. Standing in a different sphere, a different realm, in a different element. A protected environment. Just like you had a protected environment 
until Adam became disobedient. And after he became disobedient, the tree of life became a protected environment, protected by cherubims, that Adam could not go back there. So, when we speak about tongues and languages and things like that, we ought not to deceive ourselves with the doctrines of men, but always have the doctrine of Jesus Christ to support what we're saying. Does that answer your question, sir? It, it certainly does, and I hope others have heard this. You know, this is so important to hear, so important to hear with regards to when you speak in the ear. Again, you made a very profound reference that it is, it is the intercessory spirit that speaketh on our behalf. Because we cannot go before God, but Jesus Christ will present us before God and present our tears. The Bible said, you know, he already knows what your needs are before you come to him. So if he knows our needs, we are his children, certainly he will answer our prayer according to our needs and according to his will. And so that really does answer that question. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. And then the Bible tells us that we should bring every thought into captivity. Every thought. Why? Every thought. Because the thoughts that comes to our mind not co not only comes from God, but also from the adversary. Unclean mm. thoughts, different thoughts. Yes. And we have to try the spirit, try those thoughts. And just like thoughts yes. come to us, thoughts emanate from us. They go out from us. And then they get up into the air of which Satan is that prince. And he interferes Jesus said to Peter, Simon, behold, Satan desire to sift you as wheat. And we will <laughs> see certain things as we run this race. That's why you have to be wise to run this race. Even the My chiefest God. of disciples, the devil will desire to sift them. So we have yes, to know will. how to stand. He will desire to save her. He will desire to save you. He will desire to save me. He will desire to save any one of us. So the thoughts are important. The thinking. That's why we use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We stay with the seed. We stay with the word. Because he exalted his word above his name. That word is like fire. Yes. That is like a consuming fire. It's like a it sword, quick and powerful and sharper. Wherever you live, it will find you. My God. It's sharper than a twisted sword, discerning between the bone and the marrow, the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's why you use God's word. And when you put God's yeah. word out there, oh, the Bible says it will cut, but it will heal. So the word That's says... Really the great city was divided into three parts. Now, one of the things we see, and we just said that Satan desired to sift the disciples as weed. Even the great city. Satan desires division. And here, the great city, Jerusalem, after they were called to the war, to that battle of Armageddon, was divided into three parts. The adversaries, the people at enmity, the people that were at odds because of that spiritual warfare began to divide Jerusalem. Now, why did this happen? Well, Melchizedek was king of Salem. He was a priest of the Most High God. He was a theophany. He was a foreshadowing of Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to Jerusalem, the people began to say, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. But the religious institutions, the chief priests, the scribes, and the Pharisees, they stirred the people. When Samuel was judged, the people said, Give us a king that we might be like the nations around us. They had a king. And the Lord had to console Samuel, telling him, he said, no worries, Samuel, it's okay. They have not rejected you. Samuel, I want you to get one thing in your mind. Mm -hmm. He said, they have not rejected you, they have rejected you. They want to be like everybody else. But Israel was chosen as a holy nation, a nation of kings and priests. 
But they weren't satisfied with the administration of God because they only wanted good. But after Adam ate from the tree, he says, when you eat from this tree, you're going to know good and evil. So once the fruit of the tree is eaten, you're going to experience both what? Good and evil. Because God created good and he created evil also. So when Israel began to experience difficulties, trials, persecutions, they said it was a king that would lead us to go fight. Samuel was a representative of the judges of Israel. And God, God had a system of judges which he said he will restore when he returns. He said, give us a king. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And Samuel, the Lord told Samuel, take it easy, Samuel. They have not rejected me. They have, they have not rejected you. They have rejected me because I am their king. So what we have here, the great city was divided into three parts. There were those who sided with the traditions of the elders. And they reject, they by their tradition made the word of God of none effect. They by their traditions made the word of God of none effect. They rejected the teachings of God. So when Jesus came as king, they said, we have no king but Caesar. So they chose who their king was. So the great city was now divided after that war. After that battle. And it was divided along those spiritual lines. Jerusalem is divided in three parts. You have the Muslim sex sector. You have the Jewish sector. And you have the Christian sector. Those who chose to follow Messiah. Those who says, yes, I believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Lord of all. And we are going to follow him. There are those who say, no, 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 away with that man. We stay in with, as they said, God. But they cannot come to God except through Jesus Christ. Then you have the Muslims who say, Jesus is just a prophet. And they're holding on to God. So one sector, the sector of Christ, the Christian sector, is saying, we looking on to Messiah. One sector says, we have our own religion. And another saying, they have their own religion. So the great city was divided into three parts. But look next at what is happening. And the cities of the nations fell. Not just, just Jerusalem. But the other cities fell. Now in 1917 in the first world war and thereabouts. The cities of various nations fell. In 1948 Israel was reestablished. And the city is divided. It's not controlled by the Jews, Muslims, nor Christians. Just like the word says, Thy word is truth, O God. And then the word says, And great Babylon came in remembrance before God. The origins of the image. The origins of the beast. Nebuchadnezzar had set up a great big image. Then God remembered. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. So God is pouring out his wrath upon the earth now. Starting from the head of gold, the breastplate of silver, thighs of bronze, legs of iron and feet of iron and clay. So a whole meltdown of that system of the beast, that image, is melting down now. From the head to the toes. Because of that stone cut without hands out of the rock. Smote the image on the feet. Now when you damage the feet or something. The head come down. You hurt a man's foot. It bring down everything. And the feet were smitten. And Babylon came falling down. Had in remembrance before God. To give unto her the cup of the wine. Of the fierceness of his wrath. Because Babylon had corrupted the nations with her religious doctrine. She had made men drunken with the wine of her fornication. They had gone after different gods and different worship and mix up, mix up all kind of things and gotten away 
from the God of heaven because she wanted to maintain earthly control. Nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. found out that the most high God ruled in the kingdom of men. <coughs> Nebuchadnezzar thought he was great and he was going to yeah. rule in earth. So you have this Babylonian system that rules over the kings of the earth thinking they rule without God. But the government mm -hmm. shall be upon his shoulders. It was had in remembrance before God. And God gave unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away. The islands of the sea, Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, Antigua, St. Lucia, all the islands of the sea fled. They fled away. Waters overflowed them. And they were no more. The islands fled away. And the mountains were not found. Just like in the times of that first flood. The mountains were overcome with water. There was a great earthquake. And like you said on last night. Those mountains came tumbling down. The exalted yes. were brought low. And then verse 21 says. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. And every stone hmm. about the weight of a talent. And we discovered last night. It was between 129 pounds or thereabouts. Yes. Absolutely. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, and for the plague the, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So here it is, there is no great big worldwide repentance. For talking about, oh, there's gonna come a great big revival and a great men were blaspheming God when the wrath of God was being poured out on the earth. But we were the saints. Those who had gotten the victory over the beast and over his mark were standing on a sea of glass. Glass mixed with fire waiting before the throne of God. It's in the word. Yes. And that's where we have to stand. We must stand upon God's word. We've mm -hmm. concluded chapter 16. Amen. We thank and praise God. At this time, back in the hands of Bishop Stevens, we'll have the last word and close us out as we come back for our morning worship. Amen, amen. So we heard it, we heard it, we heard it. The conclusion of chapter 16. There's a beautiful wrap up today. We thank God for uh, the word of God for, for you, Brother Brown, and also for those who are watching. Uh, at this time, I want to greet Sister Jasmine Morgan. Amen. And, you know, we just want to thank God for what he's given us. Hallelujah. You know, God, God is no secret of God. Not you know, at all. God don't keep secret from anybody. You know, God opens up himself, the word, and gives it to us the way it is. This Hallelujah. is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And when you read it for yourself, you can see that God is now revealing himself and what is to come. So there's no secrets. No secrets. Prepare yourself for that day. Prepare yourself for that day. Because God is warning you now. This is what's going to happen. Will you be prepared? Don't be caught off guard. Don't be caught naked. But be caught ready and waiting for the return of our Lord jesus christ we're gonna we're gonna break here and we're gonna come back at 11 a.m for our sunday worship we pray that you join us and call a friend call a neighbor tell them to come join us as we worship the lord in spirit and in truth let us close in prayer right now father in the name of jesus be so thankful to you O god for the enlightenment of your word for the grace you have poured out upon your children god we would be nothing without you and so this morning we thank you for what was said God, we pray that we will not only be readers of the word, but doers of the word and continue to grow in grace. That, oh God, you will give us favor and bless those who are not yet come. Those who are still thinking, touch them, oh God. Open up their eyes, open up their minds, that they may come to know you as the true and living God as we depart from here. And not from your presence, oh God. And as we return for our midday service, God, I pray our 11 o'clock service. I pray, God, you will bless and touch us and keep us in good spirit as we say thanks in the precious name of jesus christ amen, amen. so we will be back amen. at 11 a.m in jesus precious name may god bless you bishop see you in a few minutes god bless you sir. Mm -hmm.